Hey guys, I'm Haley Randall. I am a competitive powerlifter and a law student. Welcome to my channel where I cover a wide variety of powerlifting and fitness related topics. Um, now, before I start, I just want to give a warning that I will be discussing um, disordered eating and binge eating in this video. Um, so I've been getting a lot of messages from people asking how I got into powerlifting and basically wanting to know um, what made me want to start. So I was planning on making a video about that, but as I tried to put my thoughts together, I realized that there's a lot that I want to say about my overall fitness journey um, that goes beyond how I got into powerlifting. This video is going to be a little longer and more personal than I originally intended it to be. Um, I'm going to go into a few topics that I wasn't planning on getting into, but they're weighing um, pretty heavily on my mind as I um, as I tried to think about what made me start powerlifting and how I got into it. Um, I realized that it would be difficult for me to talk about that without going into these um, other things because um, one without the other isn't going to give you guys the full picture. Um, so I think that right now through powerlifting, I'm finally in a place where I'm so comfortable and happy with my body and I feel confident in my skin, um, but I did not start in that place by any means. Um, and it has taken me a lot of um, conscious effort um, to get to this place of self-love. So that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video. So when I think back on my early life, the first time I remember having conscious um, negative thoughts about my body um, is when I was in the third grade. Um, I remember I had this green dress that my mom had bought me for back to school and I was so excited to wear it. I thought it was so nice and I wanted to wear it on the first day of school. Um, so I wore it and then my mom ended up getting the pictures developed from my first day of school. And I remember looking at the pictures um, and thinking that my face and my arms looked really chubby and that like compared to the other kids who were in the picture um, with me who were in my grade at school, I just felt like I looked like a huge um, giant next to them. Um, and that's the first time that I actually remember having a conscious negative thought about how I looked or my weight or my appearance or anything like that. Um, so this type of thinking only continued and intensified between this age um, and when I hit puberty in the seventh grade. I was always the tallest girl in my class and I just remember I always felt like just this huge person next to all these tiny little girls that I went to school with. So a lot of things changed for me in the seventh grade because I switched from a tiny private Christian school um, to a big public school this year. Um, it was like a whole new world for me and I was extremely <laughs> socially awkward because I had been pretty sheltered up to this point. Um, so when I got into the seventh grade and I switched schools, um, I had so many problems with bullying um, that first year because I just didn't know how to interact with people. Um, so a lot of the things that I said and did got taken the wrong way by a lot of the kids that I went to school with. Um, and it just ended up being a very, very difficult year for me. And at the same time that I was going through all of these issues with other kids and with bullying and with, you know, trying to figure out my place in a school like this and um, trying to develop some social skills, I guess. Um, this was also the first year that someone actually called me fat to my face. Um, so it was one of the boys that I went to school with and it literally still um, hurts me to think about it um, to this day. Um, this is why I started telling my little brother when he was around that age. Like I, I said to him, like, you need to be careful um, what you say to the girls that you go to school with because you never know um, what one comment will be that one thing that just sticks with them for the rest of their lives. And for me, it was that. Um, looking back, I'm sure this boy was just being an idiot. And I know that I, I wasn't fat. Like when I look back on myself in seventh grade now, like I wasn't fat at all. Um, but it literally shifted the entire way that I saw myself 
and I would go home from school and cry about how I looked for hours every night for like two years straight after this. So after this was said to me, um, this was the first time in my life that I actually tried to diet. So after he said that, I kind of made a decision in my head that I would just not eat at all until I was as small as the other girls that I went to school with. Um, I would last about a day, sometimes a day and a half, and then I would be so hungry and so sad about everything um, that was going on at school that I would just eat nonstop whatever I could. Um, like literally anything I could get my hands on, I would just eat nonstop. Um, this binge eating um, that started that year um, it became a huge problem for me and it's lasted all through high school and it's it's honestly still something that I have to consciously fight to this day. So when I started high school, I got better at the whole dieting thing. Um, better being completely the wrong word here because I had no idea how to eat healthily in a safe way, um, but I was what I mean by better is I was able to go longer periods of time eating less and my binges um, grew further apart. I also got my first gym membership at this time, so I began to try to lose weight um, through yo-yoing unhealthily, um, doing tons of excessive cardio. Um, so through all four years of high school, my weight started um, fluctuating up and down um, dramatically. Um, it would change like huge numbers month to month. It was um, an extremely unhealthy habit um, where I would binge a lot and then I would diet and do a ton of cardio a lot and my weight would yo-yo up and down all through high school. Um, and I always thought that there was something wrong with me and that if I could just have more self-control um, and go longer periods of time between binges, my life would be perfect and I would be so happy and skinny. Um, and at this time, in my mind, happiness and being thin were directly linked. So the next major shift in how I felt about and treated my body happened when I was 19. So on my 19th birthday, I looked in the mirror and I realized that I still hated what I saw. And I had this like moment of complete resolve where being skinny became the most important thing in my life. Um, and this started probably the most unhealthy period of time so far in my life because I just became so fixated on losing weight. I cannot even explain to you how one track minded I became at this time. It was all I thought about. It was pretty much all I talked about. Um, it was basically what my entire life revolved around. Um, so I started eating 1000 calories a day. I remember the number because I would never go above this. Like I counted everything down to a T. Um, I remember looking online for how many calories I should be eating and basically every article that I found said females should eat 1200 calories a day. So somehow, I don't know how they got this number. Like this number was a huge thing at this time and I'm not sure where it came from, but in my mind it was like, okay, if 1200 is the right number for a girl, then if I subtract 200 calories from this number, then that should be the right number for me to lose weight quickly. Um, I have no idea where that whole 1200 calorie trend started, but um, for some reason it was pretty common thing at that time. Um, I also started doing an excessive amount of cardio, like we're talking like two to three hours every single day. So at this point in time, um, with the extremely low amount of calories and all of the cardio, um, my weight finally started to drop. I remember weighing myself obsessively every day and just feeling so accomplished every time the number would drop. I also started getting like really positive feedback from friends and family at this point about how great I was doing and how good I looked. Um, and that kind of just added fuel to the fire and made me feel like I was doing the right thing even though looking back now, I obviously know that I wasn't. Um, I was still binging at this time, but I was doing it in a much less um, regular way. Um, and every time that I would, I was punishing myself with excessive cardio and fasting. Um, so my weight continued to drop. Um, I ended up losing about 60 pounds and everyone was telling me that I looked great, but I just wasn't feeling it. 
like I was skinny, but I had no tone at all. And I just didn't look vital or healthy. I just looked skinny and blah and unhealthy. So as school got more busy and I became fixated on getting into law school and getting good grades, it's like having a different goal to fixate on made the weight thing less important to me. So I stopped excessively counting and restricting calories um, and I started only doing manageable amounts of cardio, honestly, because I just didn't have time to do the amount that I had been doing before. Um, I don't think that my mindset about my body and food were healthy at this point, but at least because I had something else to fixate on, I became physically healthier. Um, so I gained back about 20 pounds and in reality, I probably looked way better and more healthy, but I still beat myself up pretty hard about it. Um, I was still binging at this time, especially when I would get stressed about school and, and personal things that were going on. So when I was 22 years old, my brother was working out at a gym called FTFS that specialized in training athletes. Um, I had tried to start weightlifting on my own a couple of times because it was something that I was always kind of interested in, um, but I had no idea what I was doing. And I felt overwhelmed and uncomfortable um, at the gym, trying to do things I'd never done before in front of people um, who seemed like they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, I was driving my brother to and from the gym and I saw the kinds of workouts that he was doing there. And I thought that it just looked awesome and super effective and honestly fun. Um, so I asked if I could start working out there and after some convincing, um, Derek who owned the gym finally said that he would start training me. So this was the first time that I learned how to properly um, lift heavy weights and Derek also taught me a lot about nutrition. Um, I loved everything about lifting heavy. I wasn't following a powerlifting program per se at this time, but my workouts uh, were still focused on the three big lifts and when I would hit a new strength PR, um, I would feel really accomplished and happy with my body in a way that I never had before. Um, I loved it. And because I was following a proper nutrition program at this time, I was never hungry. I never felt starving. Um, so I hardly ever binged. I started seeing muscles in places I had never seen them before. And I just felt really healthy, like my body could do anything. Um, I started looking up to women who were strong and athletic, and I thought they all looked so beautiful. Um, my mindset really started shifting at this point. Um, I finally began to care more about what my body could do and how it felt than how it looked. Um, and the best part was that I was really good at lifting weights. I was naturally really strong and I had found a competitive outlet for myself um, and one that would keep me healthy at the same time. Um, I also completely ditched the scale at this point because I realized that it triggered some unhealthy habits in myself. So after a couple years of recreationally lifting weights, I decided to give competitive powerlifting a try. And I have honestly never looked back. Um, I feel mentally and physically healthier than I ever have in my life. I literally love my body. I do not care what the scale says. And I'm in a place where I only use it for the months leading up to a competition to make sure that I make weight. Um, I still do binge once in a while. It's something that I still do um, struggle with when I'm feeling really stressed or upset about something, but it doesn't happen often. And when it does, I, I don't beat myself up over it um, or fixate on it. I really do not think this mind shift would have been possible um, if it were not for powerlifting and I could not be happier with where this journey has taken me. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, it ended up being much longer and more personal than I originally intended it to be. So thank you so much for bearing with me here. Um, I just want you all to know that if you do suffer with any of these issues that I talked about, I'm always happy to listen and try to offer encouragement and advice um, if you shoot me a message. These things are not easy to overcome and it'll take a lot of conscious effort and a lot of falling down and picking up, picking yourself back up again. It's not something that's just going to happen. Um, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but it is something that can happen. It is possible. Um, so thank you guys so much. Have a great week and I will talk to you next week. Bye.